Uh, her name is Jessica Huffman. And listen, she didn't ask to be here to do this. She's scared to death right now. I know her very well. This is her husband. Me and him were cellmates in prison in 2009. We go way back, okay? 2008. And uh, anyways, by God's sovereignty and God's grace, he's brought this family together, this marriage together. He saved their marriage. He saved their family. Jessica's been delivered from some stuff that a lot of you ladies are going through right now. So listen to me, please. Would you be easy on her tonight? Would you respect her tonight? Give her all the respect and attention she deserves? As she's going to get up out of here and stretch herself out of her comfort zone, okay? Uh, let me pray for you, sister. <laughs> And it didn't. 
and stayed the same exact way. Um, at the age of 23, I got pregnant with my second daughter, Rayanne, and a couple days after I had her, it was the first time that I took a pain pill, and I liked it. And within a few months, I was sticking a needle in my arm for the first time in my life, just trying to run away from, you know, all the pain and the hurt that I had felt before. Um, that went on for a couple more years, and by 25, I was pregnant with my third child, my son, and he was born addicted to opiates. Um, you know, that was a really low spot in my life. Not only was he born addicted, but in the hospital room I had needles up in there because the pain medication that they were giving me wasn't enough to cut it. So DFS came in and they took my three kids. My husband went to jail. DFS saw fit that, you know, I, I go into drug court because they said it would fast track me getting my kids back. So I, I did it, I accepted it. I wanted my kids back. More than anything in the world, I wanted my kids back in the house. Um, I cleaned my life up. I got involved at church. I started serving in a church. I was reading my Bible every day. I was doing all the things that, you know, a Christian was supposed to do. And God was moving in my life. He made a lot of changes. I had a job, I was able to get a home, and after about a year, I had my kids back. Life was, <laughs> life was busy, and you know, it, it took a lot of work having the three kids there by myself. Life, life I thought, had finally hit that gliding point where it was good. After 14 months, I graduated drug court, and my husband got home, and I thought we had this perfect family. But a slow fade had already started to happen, and the God who stepped out of heaven and changed my life, he wasn't a priority for me anymore. You know, the world got in the way, life got in the way, and uh, before I knew it, I was a heroin junkie. Okay, I'm going to stop here for a second and just say a couple things. Um, I left a lot of details out of my life. My life was the perfect picture of Romans 1, 28, 32. And it says, And even, the, even as they did not retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind. To those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, strife deceit, evil-mindedness, they are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. That was me. The second thing I want to say is that the word but, B-U-T, it's a powerful word. See, it voids whatever came before it. You know, I'm going to show you. I was going to graduate high school, but I had better things to do. I was going to have the perfect marriage, but it was falling apart. I was going to have a happy family, but my kids were miserable. I never used while I was pregnant, but I did. I'd never lose my kids. They were taken from me. The list goes on and on and on. I turned my back on God, and my state was worse than the first time. I can't tell you exactly when that slow fade started, but I can tell you how it did. I put my Bible down a couple days a week. I stopped going to church a couple times a month. You know, and then I thought, well, 
A couple beers isn't gonna hurt me. Then bam, I had a needle back in my arm. I gave the devil a foothold and he ran with it. And that list of butts that I gave you got a lot longer. The more I did, the longer it got. I'd never steal from stores, I did. I'd never break into cars, but I did. I'd never go back to jail, but I did several, several times. I would never go to prison, but I did. I'd never do drug court again, but I was standing in Peggy Davis's courtroom for the second time. In November 2012, me and my husband were arrested for robbery, and our son was with us. We'd lost everything at this point, and I was strung out really bad. I was about to lose my kids again. Well, David stayed in jail, and I went to treatment. Again, worked for a little while, but then I got a DUI, and that sent me to prison. I spent four months in there, away from my kids, didn't work either. Within a couple of months um, of being released from prison, I was sitting in jail again because I couldn't quit using. By some miracle, I got released to a treatment center and found my way here to Freeway and the Crossway. But I wasn't alone. Amen. I was in a relationship. It was one of many affairs that I've had in my years of being married. Um, I knew who God was, but I wasn't willing to let go of my sin. I thought that I could do it on my own. So I quit going to church again. And I can see my life slipping back to the way that it was before. When my husband got out of jail that time, he didn't come home that time. I was struggling and I was hurting and I was confused and absolutely broken. So I did the only thing I needed to do and I cried out to God. My marriage was over. My family was torn apart. My kids were hurting. I was living with my mom again. I felt alone and I wanted to die. But God heard my cry. You know, no one comes to God perfect, and I definitely wasn't the exception. And the Bible says that we all fall sin, we all fall short of the glory of God. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. But God, God can use you if you're willing to let go of your sin and let him into your life and take control. I was ready to do that. The first sin that was to go was that relationship that I was in. And from there, God started moving in my life in ways that I can't even describe. And when he did, that list of buts got a lot longer. But they were different and they were better this time. My marriage was over, but God mended my broken relationship. My kids were hurting, but God healed their hearts and comforted them. My family was shattered, but God restored what I lost. We didn't have a home of our own, but God provided one for us. Today I have over two years clean. <laughs> Only God can do that. Today I have a healthy marriage. And only God can do that. My family is together and happy in a beautiful home. Our bills are paid. 
saved, we have food to eat. Only God can supply everything that we need. I study my Bible every day. I go to church regularly. I'm a member of a church for the first time in my life. We give God what's His, and we pray together, and I serve wherever I'm needed. This old Dauphine is allowed to go into treatment centers and share my hope with them. Amen. They let me serve up in a children's ministry where I can teach the kids. I wouldn't have had any of that if I hadn't listened to God and been obedient. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. I'm not who I used to be. I was dead in my sin. But God, God heard my cry, and he saved me. He restored my family and gave me back everything I lost and more. Amen. Amen. He's not finished with me yet. Never 
ever be moved. Lord, by your favor, you've made my mountain strong. You hid your, you hid your face and I was troubled. I cried out to you, O oh Lord, and the Lord, may I make supplication. What profit is it? What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it declare your truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me. Lord, be my helper. You've turned my mourning into dancing. You've put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. To the end that my glory may sing praises to you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. This is a Thanksgiving song, and the author, author is King David. He was the king of Israel. Throughout this song, you'll see that David has much to be thankful for. David mentions all kinds of stuff that God did for him. He said in verse 1 that God lifted him up. He said there was a time when I was dark in a dark place, and God, just like somebody lowered a well, Lord looked down in that dark place, and he grabbed a hold of me, and God lifted me up. David said that God rescued him from death. In verse 3, verse 9, David said he was about to die. And God lifted him up and rescued him. In verse 3, David said God was angry with him. God was angry from him and God rescued him from his anger. Let me, let me just give you something to think about. Whose hell do you think lost people go to? It's God's hell. Full of his wrath. He created it. He made it. That's the ultimate punishment when people rebel against God. Listen, God's anger, judgment begins in the house of God, people. And that's the truth for Christian people. I want you to take that on and listen to it. David was rescued from deep anguish and depression. Verse 5 and verse 11 said that David had wept and cried all night long. And God had rescued him from that anguish. Verse 7 said that David had inner turmoil. He was, he was going through some inner turmoil. David was going through some stress in his life. Some things was eating him alive. He said there was a time when God delivered him from those inner struggles that he'd been going through. Let me give you some history real quick. All the things that David mentioned being rescued from were a direct result of turning away from God. David had let his pride get in the way and David forgot who got him where he was. He was the king of Israel. He had all authority. He had all power from God. David won a huge military battle against the Philistines in 1 Chronicles chapter 20. It said that David and the army of Israel defeated all the descendants of Goliath and wiped them out. And then it said there was an adversary that raised up against David in 1 Chronicles chapter 21. And the adversary in the Bible says Satan, but the Hebrew word there for Satan means adversary. In my own opinion, as I study this, I don't believe it was the devil. I believe the devil was behind it, but it was an army. It was somebody had authority and power was waging war against Israel. And David had numbered the men. David said, I want to number my army to see how many we have. And Joab, his mighty man of all, was against that. And David's word overthrew Joab's word. And David's numbering the men was an abomination to his lead general. And because of what David did, God's wrath came on Israel. And through God's wrath, he sent, he sent his prophet to David. His prophet came to David, I think it was Nathan. And Nathan said, God's going to give you three choices, David. And he gave David three choices. And David said, I want to fall into the hands of God more than I do in the hands of men. And so God sent a plague to the children of Israel. And 70,000 people had died by the plague. David and all of his elders got on their faces and they prayed in sackcloth and ashes. And this is the prayer. Oh God, how long? Oh God, why am I going to die? David was going through stress. David was going through turmoil. And God came to David through his, through his seer, Gad. I think his name was Gad. He came to David. This is what he said. He said, go to Ornon to the top of the hill to the threshing floor. And you go up there and you make a sacrifice to me. So David goes up to the top of the threshing floor and he sees the angel of the Lord with a sword drawn. And David tells the, the man who owns the threshing floor, he said, i got to make a great sacrifice. It's going to cost me something. And he made a sacrifice of God. The angel of the Lord put his sword in the sheep and went through the plague. And David said, this will be the place of the temple of God. This will be the place where we'll make sacrifices to our God. This is when we will begin to build the temple for God. And David began to get the supplies. David began to make orders. David began to prepare for Solomon to build the temple. This is the song of dedication. This is the song David wrote about the mercy of God pulling back his wrath and changing that situation that day. 
1 Chronicles 21. So that's the history. David was so thankful that God showed mercy. David was so thankful that God heard his prayer. David was so thankful that God had mercy to him when he, when he, when he decided to, to uh, go to the place where God turned away his wrath and he built, he's going to build that temple for the Lord. This is a dedication song. This was supposed to be sung at the time when they built the temple and began to build. One night, I've got a little boy named Keith, and he's a walking, talking illustration waiting to happen. All I've got to do is watch him, and I'll have all kinds of stuff I can preach about. Well, one night, I was tucking him into bed, and he had gotten angry at me. He was mad at me because it was bedtime. How many of you guys got kids to do that, right? They try to do everything they can to stay awake. Everything. They pull out all the stops, man. He's got to he's eat a sandwich. He's thirsty. He wants to get a drink. He wants to do this. He wants to do that. He's trying to hustle me. And I said, no, it's bedtime. So I put him in the bed. I'm chucking him in. He's angry. His face, his confidence has changed. His once happy face has grown sad. His lips is bent up. I know my son. He's angry. I said, Keith, would you like to pray? He said, no. I don't want to pray. I said, well, that's fine. I'll tuck you in and pray for you. And so as I tuck Keith in and begin to pray, he said, I'll pray. So usually he'll pray first and then I'll pray. This is his prayer. God, thanks for nothing. I hope we can be more thankful than my son Pete. Tonight I hope we can realize how much God's done for us and we can truly reflect on the goodness of God. And tonight we're going to get inside the prayer closet of King David and we're going to listen to him pray. And we're going to see how our lives match up with King David's lives. As he prayed a prayer of thanksgiving and he wrote a song about it. We have it right here etched in the history of the Bible. The first point I want to make is this. David was thankful that the Lord lifted him up. How many of you tonight are thankful that the Lord lifted you up? I'm going to lift it up. Can you praise you? Thank you, Lord. Imagine David knew what he deserved due to his obedience. Of disobedience. David was thinking about the mercy that God had on his life. David started to write a song and thank God for lifting, lifting him up when he could have let him go down to the grave. How many can look back on their lives and, and think of where they are right now and say, if it wasn't for God, I would be in the grave. If it wasn't for God, I'd be gone right now. God has saved me. God delivered me. God gave me a place to live. God gave me a friend to go on. Lifted me up and put me where I am today. I can be thankful tonight that God lifted me up. David mentioned he had enemies. And they were just waiting to rejoice over him. Look what he says in chapter 1. I will extol you. I will lift you up. I, I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up. And not let my foes rejoice over me. When David wrote this song, they were going through war. They were going through battle. They just wanted a big victory. And there was an adversary that was coming against Israel. And 70,000 David's men had died. And so David was saying that you're not going to let my enemies rejoice over me. You're not going to let them that would have laughed at me if I would have went down to the pit. You saved me from that ridicule. You lifted me up. That's exactly what David was saying. Do you realize that there are people waiting for you to fail? Do you realize there are people waiting for you to fall? Do you realize there's people saying that old Christian stuff, it's not going to work? That old religion's not going to work? That, that, that you're just going through a phase and you'll be back in the crack house. You'll be back with a needle in your arm. You'll be back robbing and stealing. You'll be back on mug shots. Well, listen to me tonight. You don't have to go back to the dope house. You don't have to go back to prison. You don't have to go back to the street. You don't have to be back on mug shots. There's some that are waiting to say the three words. I told you so. I told you, listen to me. Tonight I'm thankful that God continues to show 
that he still lifted people up. I thank God that God is continuing to show us tonight that Jessica Huffman was lifted up. She was lifted out of the pit. She was lifted out of miry clay. She was put back on track. Listen, they say this ministry will not last because there are a bunch of ex-cons and ex-cons can't do ministry. Broken heart was going to kill him. 
One of the Psalms, when he repented, I think it's Psalms 50 or 51, David says, make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you've broken may rejoice. David played music. He couldn't even hear because he was under the conviction of God. And David said, you healed me. You healed me from that conviction. Listen, this is what, what happened when the Holy Spirit hits your heart. Two things. First thing is, this is two things, options. One is you get mad. You get angry. Get up, preacher, preacher. I mean, you know, I had some kids that walk up to me and say, what did my mom tell you about me? <laughs> mom, your mom didn't tell me. I don't know who your mom is, dude. The Holy Spirit got on you. The Holy Spirit penetrated your heart and you're mad. Instead of being mad, you need to crawl on your belly to the altar and give your life to Jesus Christ so you can be forgiven of your sins and free from that emotional stress and baggage. Listen to me. Do you know how good it feels to be freed from guilt? Do you know how good it feels to have that baggage dropped off? Do you know how good it feels to be free from shame, suffering, and all the things that come along with it? Man, I'm telling you what, I don't know about you, but when I was a dope fiend on the street, I was a drug, strung out drug addict. I was ashamed. I was ashamed. I couldn't put people in the eye. Man, all I wanted to do was get my dope and hide in the house. The last thing I wanted to do was see somebody who loved me. Yeah. last thing I wanted to do was see somebody who really cared about me. But where was I at? I was hiding with everybody who didn't care about me. The person I wanted to be around was the people who didn't love me because I knew they didn't care what happened to me. Hey, listen, I was a man of courage, but when I got started on dope, I became a man of, of, of power. It took my courage from me. I had shame. I didn't want to, I didn't want to even stand up for myself, man. Only thing I cared about is getting high and trying to make the pain go away. But guess what? In 2008, a prison cell of Fort Missouri, Jesus Christ took my shame. Jesus Christ healed my emotional stress and my pain. I'm not ashamed right now. I know who I am in Christ Jesus. Look what Psalm 69 verse 20 says. This is David. He wrote this. Reproach has broken my heart. Reproach has broken my heart. I'm full of heaviness. I looked for someone to take pity on me, and there was none. And comforters, but I found none. Listen to that verse. Some of you are on that verse. This is, this is you. Listen to it. Reproach has broken my heart. I'm full of heaviness. I looked for someone to take pity, but there was none. And someone to comfort, but I found that. That was me. I just want somebody to love me. Do you know how good it feels to be loved and free? Do you know how good it feels to be forgiven? Listen, I found somebody who loves me. I found somebody who cares for me. I found somebody who's faithful to me. I found somebody who's perfect. I found somebody who's pure. I found somebody who's lovely. I found somebody who would never bad talk me, never gossip about me, never beat me, never mistreat me, never leave me, never ban me, never forsake me. He is good. He is holy. He is just. He's Jesus Christ. And he died on the cross so I can live in him. Yeah. How many can remember when God forgave you? How many can remember when God lifted you up out of that pit? Listen, you need to be thankful. You need to be thankful for that. You need to be shouting hallelujah, praise God, and be thankful for that. Listen, when you should, uh, when you should be praising Him, you should be thanking Him, you should be sharing Him with the world around <laughs> you. If you're broke, homeless, in the street, wet clothes on, listen, I don't care what it is, because what you have right now in Christ is better, far, far better than anything this world has to offer. If you're saved and you're born again and you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you should be happy right now. You should be shouting hallelujah. You should be thankful to God for what He's done. David was also thankful for God's favor. David was also thankful for God's favor. David fell through the hard times due to not respecting the power of God. David was fooled by his pride. David was fooled by his pride. Listen to the verse. Verse 6. Now in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Not when he was in the field. Not when he was a poor son of a shepherd. 
Not when he was an outcast and nobody loved him, because that was David. He didn't say it then. He said it in his prosperity. He said it when he was on top. He said it when he had money. He said it when people knew his name. He said it when he had a winning army. He said it when he didn't have them. He was doing pretty good. He said, in my prosperity, I said I shall never be moved. David was thankful for the favor of God because God showed him it was by God's favor he was where he was. And we're going to get more into this in a minute, but we're going to take a 15-minute break and we'll see you guys back. Hopefully.